Good morning, church. Good morning out there in video land. We're going to start the same way we always start. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Amen, church. You know, yesterday when the elders got together and we decided to, to cancel our services for this Sunday, it, it was not an easy decision to make. But as we looked at, at our congregation, uh, as we reflected on the phone calls we'd received from several members who, who were just concerned about their health and the health of others, especially with the influx of visitors that we're going to start having over the next few weeks. We made the decision to cancel the services, and as I said, it was a tough decision to make. But as I got up this morning and, and checked my phone and saw the fact that yesterday in China there were only 11 new cases of the coronavirus, but in Florida yesterday there were 25 new cases of the coronavirus, those facts lead me to believe that we made the right decision. So. Bear with us for the next few weeks, uh, and we look forward to when we can get together again in person. Will you join me in prayer? Dear God, our Father in heaven, we thank you for the book of James that we're going to be studying from today. Father, we thank you for the blessings that we have, and we thank you and we consider it pure joy, God, the trials that we face in our daily lives. And Father, we're, we're facing a big one right now with this virus that's spreading around the world. And Father, we, we pray this morning that you'll be with our nation, our communities, our leaders, our world, and our world leaders, Father, that you'll guide them to lead us in ways where we will make the right decisions, Father, where we can get through this as quickly as possible and get back to a normalcy in our lives. Father, I pray today for this congregation that you'll keep us all healthy that you'll keep us from being discouraged, and that you will meet all the needs that we have. And Father, as we, as we study from the book of James this morning, I pray that you'll, you'll use me as a vessel to, to bring this word forward, that the Holy Spirit will speak this morning, even though it's via video, Father, and that people will be blessed. I offer up this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So church, it was two weeks ago that we began a new series on the book of James. So if you have your Bibles with you this morning, go ahead and pull those out and be turning to that book of James, that James right there before the end of the, of the New Testament. We talked about two weeks ago that this book of James was written by, well, a guy named James. Imagine that. James is in fact the, the biological half-brother of none other than Jesus himself. He was a leader in that early church in Jerusalem. And he's writing to a, a persecuted, scattered group of Christians that have left that Jerusalem church and are now spreading out all over the Roman Empire. And James is not, he's not telling these Christians to tone down their Christianity as they're in the midst of persecution. In fact, he's doing just the opposite. He's telling them to turn up their spiritual walk so that they can turn up their faith walk in Jesus Christ. So today, as we encounter the book of James, and it talks about faith works, we need to understand in the passage from God's Word that we'll be reading from this morning, church, before faith works, faith sees things very differently. To help illustrate this, I'd like to show you a brief movie clip this morning. And in this movie clip, Robin Williams, he, he, he plays an individual known as Hunter Adams. And in fact, in this clip we're going to see, Hunter is renamed Patch. Patch Adams. Remember the movie now? Well, Hunter, or, or Patch, has voluntarily checked himself into a mental institution because he's found no purpose in life. He's found no joy in life. And then, oddly enough, it's in that mental institution that Patch finds his joy. He finds his purpose. And he finds things as he's ministering to those who are struggling with their own trials, which in turn helps him with the struggles that he finds in his own life. And Patch, well, 
Patch helps everyone, save for one person. You see, there's another man that's there in that mental institution. His name is Arthur Mendelssohn. And Arthur, he was a genius. He was a mathematician. He was a rich man who has his own trials. Well, here's what Arthur does. Arthur runs around this institution holding up four fingers, showing them to everyone and asking them, what is it you see? And when they respond to Arthur telling him that they see four fingers, he's frustrated. He's angry. He's belligerent. He's rude. He's condescending. In summary, Patch is not having much success in helping Arthur. And so in this clip we're going to watch, Patch decides to take the bull by the horns, if, if I can use that phrase, and he heads back into Arthur's room to try to understand the riddle of the four fingers. So watch this video clip with me.